Welcome to the VMware Cloud PKS demo. In this video, we're going to show how you can bring up an enterprise-grade production-quality Kubernetes cluster and start deploying complex multi-tier application in minutes. To start consuming Cloud PKS, you first log into the VMware Cloud PKS portal. VMware Cloud PKS portal leverages OpenID Connect for authentication. Uh, once logged in, you will have the option to create a Cloud PKS Smart Cluster. Cloud PKS Smart Cluster comes in multiple form factors. We will review those form factors in detail. You can also have the option to access existing cluster that has already been deployed using your single sign-on credential. Cloud PKS offers the ability to organize resources through the use of folders, projects, smart clusters, and namespaces. And also, you have the ability to manage access policy by assigning users and groups to existing folders and projects. So to deploy a cluster is super easy. Simply click on the new cluster icon. Um, you have two types of cluster to, to choose from. You have the, uh, we support the deployment cluster where um, it's best suited for uh, a testing type of activity where you know, redundancy is not a requirement and you just want to quickly validate to see if your app is you know, behaving the way it is. And they also have the option to deploy a full production cluster. And this full production cluster has you know, a high availability, right, uh, both in terms of um, the cluster uh, itself as well as the you know, redundancy across multiple zones and um, a different um, you know, availability and through use of multiple master nodes and etc the database um, for both the development and the production cluster you have the ability to select the version of the kubernetes you want to deploy and uh, you also have the ability to uh, look at the networking resources that will be um, you know uh, recreated to support the underlying cluster infrastructure so in the case of development cluster um, the addresses are fairly fixed. You don't have the ability to um, update those. Um, but for the uh, production cluster, you can actually, you know, customize the addresses based on your uh, based on your organization policies. Um, so you can change the subnets, but you need to make sure that you do not overlap um, the IP subnets with existing resources you have in your VPC. Um, now we have the ability to. Um, deploy a cluster across multiple geographic regions. You have US West, you have Europe, or you have US East. Uh, this is Virginia. And I'm going to select US East for my cluster here. And, uh, and then also I'm going to enable privilege mode. And basically, privilege mode allows you to deploy pods with escalator permission. Example of that would be Fluent D. And uh, by, by using the privilege cluster, you should be able to deploy those. Uh, just be aware, uh, there are some, you know, when you are um, making the cluster privilege, there are some risks associated with it from a security perspective. Um, and then I'm going to assign a name to my cluster. And, um, and then I can go ahead and uh, create the cluster. A smart cluster with full HA takes roughly 5 to 10 minutes to create. By default, we only provision Kubernetes worker node based on application demand. So if there are no application, we will not create any worker node. A newly created cluster will always have zero gigabyte of memory and zero CPU provisioned. We create four default namespaces. The vke-system namespace is where the smart cluster control plane resides. You can also create new namespaces directly from the UI. Here I'm creating a new namespace called demo and uh, assign a description and the new namespace is now created. I could also launch the Kubernetes UI to the new cluster directly from the dashboard as well. We leverage your single sign-on credentials to access the Kubernetes UI and once you are in the Kubernetes UI you could start to manage the new namespaces you have created. Um, you can view uh, your workload specific information such as the deployments, cron jobs, um, daemon sets, and um, you will also have the ability to actually deploy application stack directly from the UI. 
Uh, but for the purpose of this demo, uh, we're going to use the kubectl CTL later to show the application deployment. Now we're going to demo how you can manage the newly created cluster using the Cloud PKS API and CLI. To enable Cloud PKS CLI access, um, you first log into your org using your org ID and the refresh token. Um, specify, then you specify the location of your smart cluster by specify the folder and the project. And uh, you know, once you specify the folder and the project, then you can list the available clusters uh, within the project. Um, uh, after that, you will set up the authentication information of our newly created cluster um, by using the uh, cluster auth setup command. The cluster setup auth command effectively um, updates your kubectl configuration file with your OIDC token and uh, sets the cluster context to the, um, the cluster you specified. Uh, once that uh, is done, um, once the kubectl config is generated using the auth command, um, now you can leverage the native Kubernetes command to manage your cluster. Before I demo the Cloud PKS CLI, let me first show you where to obtain the organization ID and refresh token. You can obtain the organization ID by click the org name and the organization ID field from the UI. To obtain the refresh token, click on my accounts, API token. Refresh token is the first line on the newly generated page. Successful. And we'll set the folder context. Set the project context. And uh, now I can look into the my cluster. Um, once I have this information ready, I will then um, set up my cluster. And once this is set up, I now have the ability to um, look into the namespace. And um, pod, which is nothing. This um, default Kubernetes service. So now we're going to look at um, how to deploy application on the cluster that uh, we have just um, deployed. So uh, we're going to look into the node status. So we have a concept of a smart cluster, meaning that um, we are not going to create any worker nodes until there's an application that requires it. Now let's create an um, application. Um, so I have a demo chat program. Um, so I have this program here um, that um, basically is a very simple um, two-tier application with a front end and a MongoDB. Um, and then to support this application, uh, basically you have a, um, a front end deployment, it's two deployments. You have a Kubernetes deployment for a front end, and then you have a, uh, a database, Mongo database with um, one replica set. And then you have um, you know two types of services, the internal DB, and then you have the external no balance of surface that's accessible um, from the outside. And um, let me show how this is going to be consumed. So let's look let's look at the demo. Um, so this is a deployment with uh, three rep replicas and um, with port 5000 and um, with the um, 
you know, load balancer type. Um, and this is the um, type load balancer right here. So I'm going to create this application. The first action um, Cloud PKS will perform is to create sufficient uh, worker nodes required for the application. And once the worker node is created, Kubernetes um, scheduler will schedule the pod and service creation on the new worker node. Once pods and services are active, Kubernetes will then register the newly created pods to the services based on um, label selector. A label selector is something you defined um, in the YAML of the Kubernetes configuration and uh, that basically determines what resources map to what services. Once we confirm the expected pods and the services are running active, uh, we can then use the kubectl describe service command to obtain the external IP address, or in this case, the load balancer, that's required for us to reach uh, and validate the application. Simply copy the fully qualified domain name of the address and uh, go to your browser and open a new window and paste the address into the, the URL window and uh, now our application is running. This concludes our demo. Thank you so much uh, for watching the video and I hope you find this information to be helpful and I encourage you to try out Cloud PKS today. Thank you.